We are fashionably late on a Monday. Camel Nation, we apologize for that. Oh, two minutes late. That's hardly late. You know me, Alana. I know. If I'm you're like not a drill instructor. If you're not two minutes early. You're two minutes. Two hours late. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Monday, 530 Club. It's the Breakfast Buzz, Alana and Nico. Um, we are a little bit late because we have a confession to make. If you weren't following us on our Facebook page, we had a paranormal investigation of our building happen this morning. Mm-hmm. Tony and Cherie are joining us. Now, we have been up trying to find the haunted yes. in, in this building because we have heard rumors that the 840 here on North Central Avenue is haunted and that there are spirits here. Several employees have claimed missing items from their desks. Um, their personal effects have been rummaged through. Uh, they hear noises, they hear voices. They feel a presence. One person specifically, our friend Maria across the hall from Cool, has a story to tell. Maria, go ahead. Maria, Maria, Maria. We have her, we have her piped in right now. Here we go. Okay. smoke will get you every time so Tony and Cherie now what did you guys uh, determine do we have a pipe smoking ghost in our building well we we didn't get the opportunity to experience the pipe smoke smell but I can tell you from you know the last eight years of doing investigation is that smells are a very common indicator of a spirit being in a building whether it be perfumes flowers cigarettes pipe smokes Anything that's very distinct smell and isn't common or used by somebody in the building is a very good indication that there's some sort of paranormal activity going on. So her reference to smelling that pipe smoke um, is a pretty good indication that there, there very well could be something going on. Now because this building is a radio station, it, it, does, um, it does cause some challenges for paranormal inve investigators. To determine a flat rate EMF is, is very hard because each one of your rooms is filled with equipment and you have fluctuating EMFs from you know every five steps that you take. So that makes it difficult to determine. Um, and ghosts will normally make it spike or have a, a big effect on the electromagnetic frequencies that is around them. That is absolutely correct. Gotcha. Um, the okay. theory is, is that a spirit will um, emit electromagnetic frequency and when you get fluctuations in that and that's what EMF the EMF tools are for will indicate those fluctuations now because we only had an hour to do it we we did it rather quickly and normally in an investigation you would spend you know eight hours days wow days we we've investigated specific locations um, for days to really determine whether it was haunted or not so I cannot say without, with any certainty that this building is haunted, but what I can tell you is, is that the last set of audio that Cherie did um, down that long hallway, there are two EVPs on the end of that um, recording, and those tell me that there very well might be some activity here. Okay, Ooh. so she recorded her voice asking questions, Correct. and then you amplified the audio to bring up what was underneath or the, the extra frequencies that we couldn't hear necessarily. Correct. And you heard a spirit? We, we have a voice that we don't believe is anyone that was in the room. Now there were a couple of people, but we, we can clearly separate those voices from what we is being said We have to get this end. audio online immediately. We do. Like ASAP, because it was... We're going to post everything, Camel Nation, so you can check our Facebook page. Uh, we, you can check the Breakfast Buzz or Camel at 107.9, and uh, we'll we have used, They posted. had all sorts of cameras. They had these infrared cameras that just picked up heat signatures and... Yeah. 
God, there was a uh, skeletal mapper that skeletal maps out, mapper. Um, basically takes infrared to um, to determine if there's a physical body there. And when I say physical, I say that loosely because obviously spirit doesn't have any physical body. But the the camera that's being used is actually from an Xbox system, and it. Um, records a player's motions if they jump their character jumps oh, and they put their arm up got it. so it uses that technology and then uses infrared grid system to look for for body figures and it being infrared the human eye can't see infrared it may see something that we can't so if a stick figure shows up on the screen pretty good indication that yeah there could be something standing there and Sheree and I over the past have have actually interacted with those figures and um had them stand up, shake our hands, and they, they do it. So I guess I may be too much of a, like instant gratification kind of person, and I like need to see results immediately. So with your analysis, um, you said that there could be something here in this building. Obviously, I didn't witness enough for me to change my mind on whether or not spirits are among us or ghosts or demons or whatever you want to call them. So thank you for coming out. I still don't believe. I mean, it's going to take a lot more than that. I, I'm i not one of those people that... I'm not going to need to see a spirit walk by me right now. But if you give me a little bit more... So I guess we just have to spend more time with it. And we definitely have to check out the San Carlos. Because they said they took... The, they, they did all the readings and everything. And there's a ghost there. His name is Scott. And apparently he took his own life back 80 years ago. And he's still living at the San Carlos Hotel. So... Maybe I gotta hang out there, do a night there. Yeah, I, don't, I hear I don't know. that the San Carlos. Well, they just pointed at the San Carlos when we were standing in the parking lot. They're like, I don't know what's going on in your building, but down over there, there's something going on. <laughs> I don't know a lot. I don't know. It doesn't ever hurt to believe. Uh, it was fascinating to watch you guys work. It though, was very cool. All the all the technology that you have, and obviously you guys have been doing this for a long time, for like eight years. You said so. Technology has changed over that eight years, and I'm sure it's it's helped quite a bit. And yeah, well, the, the thing about technology is, yes, it can definitely help. And um, learning how to use it, of course, there's, there's always that learning curve. But the also the other flip side of technology is you always want to have other ways to back it up because there's not a piece of technology out there that somebody can't say, well, you know, you're really not, that's really not correctly reading or that's not... And there is some truth to that. I won't deny that at all. But they are tools to help us determine changes either in the atmosphere or in the, your surrounding area or picking up figures or whatever the case may be. But when you can line up three, four, five of those technologies with similar results that back each other up, that's when we know there's something going on for sure. How can people get a hold of you guys if they want you to come out to like their business or, or their home or, or whatever? variety of ways. We've got um, a website uh, personally for Entity Voices and that is www.entityvoices.com. On that page you can get uh, email addresses, telephone numbers, and everything you need to contact us whether it be for for a building, for an office, for a personal home and we obviously we don't charge for this. Um, we do this as a service to anyone who is in need of help and uh, so if you are experiencing anything which you believe to be paranormal just feel free to give us a call send us an email and we'll be happy to uh, help out any way that we can their company is called entity voices paranormal investigations do you guys have a facebook uh, business page we do and it's just under tony rathman so if you just go to facebook and look up tony rathman you will find it and you also have days worth of material to look at of places we've Ooh, been and captured. I can't wait. Uh, I quickly, in conclusion, tell us the craziest ghost story that you ever experienced. The craziest spirit interaction. Well, you know, the, the we get asked that question all the time and the, the funny part... I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's fine. For us. It, it, it is. It is a common question. <laughs> that people I always want to know. People always want to know what's the scariest thing you've experienced. But scary has limits uh, uh, depending on what you've experienced and it will grow so the first time i ever heard a voice respond to a question that i had never heard before that was scary to me um i was a complete skeptic very scientifically based when i heard my first female spirit literally give me her name when i knew nobody was around 
that shook me up for weeks. I mean, how many times did I play that? A thousand times? I mean, I couldn't believe what I was hearing or how it happened. But the most recent scary event, which happened to both of us, is we were down um, in Ajo, Arizona. We recently opened um, the Copper Canyon Paranormal Research Center, which was the old Phelps Dodge Hospital in Ajo. And we had spent um, about four hours in there investigating, and we had a ton of activity. Well, we got home about two, three o'clock in the morning. I can't remember what it was. And we were both we were both sitting in bed, and we were listening to audio that we had recorded. And something white, very white, and almost almost fluffy looking, went across the corner of the bed, and both Cherie and my heads literally followed it across the bed. And we thought maybe it was our dog because we have a white um, a white dog. But uh, he was nowhere in the room. We went and looked for him. He was laying in the corner. So whatever went across our bed was either a mist or a ghostly apparition. But um, that was that was the Ooh. most recent one that occurred. <gasps> but we've had other things happen too. I mean, Cherie did a recording one time when she was giving the dog a bath and the dog was all wet and ran off into the living room. She was recording him when he came out of the tub, but then she threw her phone onto the bed to go chase him out in the living room but she left her phone recording and she forgot about it. So she had recorded like an hour and 15 minutes of not video because it was laying on the bed, but the audio. Well, when I got a hold of that audio, we had spirits in our house making comments to Cherie, making comments about the dog and like six, five or six different voices. Nobody oh was God. in the house at the time, but her and the dog. Oh. Wow. You guys need some ghost hunters to check out your house. Mm. Oh, just, that that just would be us. <laughs> that would be us. <laughs> wow. Well, that's amazing. Thank you guys so much for taking the time this morning. Uh, we appreciate you, your efforts. And, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll do it again And if we start hearing something. I don't know. That's right. Make it longer this time. Yeah. Well, all night. And you're volunteering to be up. All night. I did. That was, nice. <laughs> that was nice. You guys do a fantastic job. Thank you for bringing all your equipment, showing us what you guys do, taking us into your world for a little bit. That was a very fun it's been a fun morning already. Yeah, great. Great. Thank you, guys. Great. Thank you. Appreciate you. you. All right. EVPI, Entity Voices, Paranormal Investigations. Check them out on Facebook. Check them out on the website. Uh, it's just entityvoices.com. We got to get to saying hello to the 530 Club. They are patiently waiting for us. Uh, Don Ye checked in and said, good morning. R. Gilbert White says, good morning, 530 Club. And Crystal says, hi, good morning, 530 Club. Yes, I absolutely believe in ghosts. Good. <laughs> I do not, Crystal. Sorry, guys. No offense. They just hope it's focus. <laughs> Tiffany Lynn says, good morning. Happy Monday. Uh, I wouldn't say that I believe in ghosts, but I do believe there are spirits in another medium that exists. Okay, I can buy that. I'm into that. Alana? You? No? I, no, of course I believe. It doesn't hurt me not to. Okay. Fine. I'm just saying. I'm going to bring you the team no ghosts. <laughs> yeah, right. Carly Adams Gregory says, good morning. Totally believe. I had some experiences that can't be explained any other way. Okay. But Fair. I can find some other ways to explain those experiences. Connie Masters says, hello, good morning. I believe. Have a great Monday, everyone. And Sherry Gustafson, absolutely. I have too many personal experiences not to believe. To See? not believe. There you go, Sherry. All right, you guys. Well, we are a couple days out from... Halloween as the spirit do this does the spirit world get more active around Halloween does that mean anything at all Tony um, I, I don't really see too much of a difference I mean of course the atmosphere is there people mindset is there and they it may seem like it increases only because people are trying to see it people are right. trying to They're experience it. Believe it correct is but there a witching hour at, at some point in three, the night 3 a.m. is supposed to be the witching hour hey. But, well, we were um, close. We were, we were recording at 4 a.m. Right. We were right around that hour. But, you know, we've experienced paranormal activity in the middle of the afternoon. So um, it happens at any time. Well, if you are a spirit present, make yourself known at 3 p.m. today so that we'll have some spirits at 3 p.m. 
It'll be a good time. I think he meant 3 a.m. Oh, no, we're not going to be here at 3 a.m. Oh, no, not again. No. No. No, I'm trying to haunt the building here. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Okay, cool. <laughs> and live coming up this morning, of course, we have those Cash Camel keywords. I think it's going to be your last week to win $1,000 of the Cash Camel's money. That starts at about 7.20 this morning, and then we're playing Battle of the Buzz. Buzz. For two tickets to the Charles Schwab Cup. November 9th, Phoenix Country Club. Morgan Wallen's going to be playing there. And we are putting you in to win the grand prize, which is you get to walk the course with some of the PGA legends. That's so cool. And then go into a special area and have dinner. Like, only the players and families get to have dinner in this little special area. So, big prize this morning for Battle of the Buzz. Yeah, so keep it right here. Thank you so much for joining us on this Monday morning. I hope you're having a fantastic day. The good news is, is we are not haunted here. We kind of are, oh, though. Oh, we are, though. A little bit. We're not haunted. But kind of. <laughs> awesome. You guys did great. Great job. Yeah, I'm going to look at your Facebook page on morning. Yeah, now I'm going to be, like, yeah, going through all your research. If you truly don't believe in spirits, let us take you down to uh, the Copper Canyon Paranormal Research Center. Every night. I will go to the craziest, scariest place in the world. That, that is the craziest. it will not affect me at all. Not even in the slightest. I'll put money yeah. on that. I, I will, I will <laughs> take your we, money. We, we, took down, we, we took down five. Give me, show me your money, Tony. Yeah. We, we show took, me the money. We took down five-time Emmy Award winning film producer who shot our video for that place. And he, the whole way down, he goes, I'm going to tell you, I'm a total skeptic. I'll, I'll shoot this for you, but I don't believe in what you do. He lasted, what, 13 minutes? 13 minutes? Yep. He, oh, he, he got ah. hot. He got touched. We heard baby crying. He, ah. he freaked out. Yes. Sign this up. <laughs> Sign him up. Oh, All right, I'm, over there. I'm in. Listen, I, I'm, I'm down to do it. I will definitely do it. 100%. All right, All right guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Woo.